What's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a basic gun system. Something very simple, basic fun functionality of a gun and stuff, nothing too advanced. And it's pretty simple and honestly easy to make and stuff. I, s I recently just figured out raycasting, which if you don't know, that's what you use to make guns, like make bullet travel and stuff like that. That's how you used to make bullet travel and generally just make guns and stuff, make them function and stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely very cool to figure out and I'm excited to honestly, I'm very excited to honestly show y'all and stuff. Very simple. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, you're going to need obviously a bullet part, right? Which you could just make like a part. Let me see. There it is. Okay, so you can just make like a little part. Of course, make sure it is not anchored as well as make sure uh, cam collide is not enabled, of course, because you don't want your bullets pushing people unless that's what you want like yeah but majority of people don't want the bullets uh to be able to you know physically push uh players or anything right so i just made a simple bullet just made a part scaled it down and then made the color neon and stuff and yeah that simple and then you want to put this in server storage because we're going to be cloning it from the server storage and stuff then head on over to stutter pack right you want to insert a tool you can name it gun and then just put together a gun and stuff i'm obviously not a modeler or anything so this is my gun but you know what i'm saying it looks like a gun pretty simple so inside of the gun you of course need your handle part this is where the player uh holds it and stuff so it's just a simple part you want to make sure it is uh transparency is set to one so it's invisible and stuff right and then you know you just have your middle uh i guess go call that the trigger i guess yeah kind of like because that's yeah so you can put your hand there and stuff and then you want to obviously have weld constraints this is what keeps the parts welded together. You want to, of course, make sure all the parts are welded together. And then you have your middle part, right? Now, you want to have a part called start. You want to name it start. Start is pretty much, this is where the bullet is going to start. Like, where it is going to start. And then, you know, the end, where it's going to end is obviously, like, whatever you're shooting at and stuff. But this is where you want it to start. So pretty much, like, you know, like, where the bullet sh should come out is, is the part that should be named start. So, yeah. That's it for gun. And of course, make sure all the parts are inside of the uh, tool name gun. And then, yeah, put that in starter pack. And from there, all we got to do now is just script. Before we get into the scripting, let's go ahead and take care of the remote event. Head on over to replicate a storage and insert a re. Oh, well, it's not available. So I'll just type in remote event. Then you guys can name it, um, I guess, gun event. Yeah, do gun event. And then. Let's take care of the local script first because it's honestly very simple. So head on over to the tool and insert a local script. You guys can name this local script gun script, then in parentheses put local so we can distinguish between the local script and the server script. Delete print hello world. First thing we're going to do is get the um, gun event. So local gun event is equal to game that replicated storage. Wait for child gun event. Then you're gonna need to get the local player. Local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. We're gonna need this variable so that we can get the player's mouse position, right? And then we need to get the tool itself. So local tool is simply script dot parent, right? And then what you're gonna to want to do is do tool dot activated colon connect function close parentheses enter right. So whenever a player clicks while the tool is like equipped it'll fire this function or trigger the function, whatever you want to refer to it as. So you need to make variables. First, the start position. So local start position. Wait, I spelled that right. Yeah, I spelled that. Wait, no, I didn't. Yeah, position. Local start position is equal to tool.start.position, right? Because remember, start is the part inside of the gun, right? So you want to get the position of the uh, part start, of the part name start. Then the end position, Local end position is going to be player get mouse dot hit dot position. We're going to modify this on the server script. So you're just going to send this over and then you want to send it all of it over. So gun event fire server. You want to send over the tool because I'm assuming for you guys game, you're going to have multiple types of guns. So it's for the best to send over uh, the tool so you can, you know, classify it in case you have if statements to identify which gun is which or which tool is which as well as you also want to be able to get the descendants of the tool, which I'll get into that later in the video. But yeah, so send over the tool, the start position, and the end position, right? And that's it for the that's it for the local script. You're done there. And now, all you got to do now is set up the server script. 
So head on over to server script service and insert a server script. And then just do the same as before, but instead name this gun script in parentheses, put server, then delete print hello world. First thing is we're going to get the remote event just like on the local script. So local gun event is, is equal to game that replicated storage. Wait for child gun event, right? Then you want to get the bullet local sorry local bullet is equal to game that server storage wait for child bullet and just in case if you're wondering why i'm doing wait for child it's better to do wait for child because the more assets you have in your game it may take a while for them to load so you would kind of have to wait for it you'd have to put in your scripts to wait for it because it may not be present exactly when the script is running because you know obviously the scripts will run before all assets are loaded depending on how many assets you have if that makes sense then the last variable we want to get before we get into the function is the tween service local ts is equal to game get service tween service this is this is what i'm going to use to uh, animate the bullet travel so then we're going to get into the function gun event dot on server event colon connect function and parentheses you know of course first uh the first thing the first variable is player because the player is automatically sent over when when we're going from local to server side with remote events then you know you have the tool the start position or start POS for short and NPOS then enter and then we're going to get the direction right the direction is you know the direction of where you want the bullet to travel in where you where you want it to go in if that makes sense because the start position we know where we're starting at right but now we want it to kind of we're trying to get how we want it to go like how we how do I explain this like you're trying to get it to where you want it to exit from the start start position and end at the end position but obviously in a certain type of way where it looks like bullet travel so local direction is equal to start make sure you do parentheses start position oh sorry not start position sorry end position minus mm, we can put yeah put space doesn't matter that start position make sure you do dot unit this will not fill dot unit right times 20. okay so i want to talk about this real quick so this right here right I'm actually going to make my 200. So to clarify, this value right here is the range. Some people have the range set as a like its own variable. I've honestly just like to just multiply it by the, by the uh the unit and stuff and then that's the direction. This pretty much is the range, right? Like depending like depending on how far away the player is from the target, that'll determine whether or not if they like they can if the raycast will work pretty much if that makes sense. Like you'll be if you'll be able to damage the player. To pretty much put it in simple terms, the higher the number, the the further the range, right? So like if your range is like, say two hundred, then yeah, you're gonna be hitting like I could hit the spawn point from like about you know over here. But if my range was twenty, I would only be able to hit it from like about right here, if that makes sense. So yeah. So if you're if you pretty much want long range guns, you want like a high number like two hundred. Short range guns like pistols and stuff like that, you probably want like I mean like. 50 maybe yeah, like 50 or something but just play around with the number until you get you know the desired range you want and stuff but yeah but anyway moving on all right so after getting direction then we can go ahead and um <clears throat> sorry then we can go ahead and not gonna lie my brain literally just stopped working um oh sorry and then we can start uh with the raycast params now, if you don't know what raycast params are, the the parameters and stuff, right? So I'm gonna go into detail while I just type it out. So let's do local raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new. Then that's it. Then you want to do raycast params. Oh, make sure you're not doing it. like it. Pretty much as long as it's not blue, you should be good. Because you want it to be, you want it to be referencing the variable. So dot filter type is equal to enum that filter that filter you see raycast filter type and do dot exclude this pretty much means it's determining whether or not the filter is used to exclude everything on the list or include and stuff but obviously majority of people go with an exclude list right you want to exclude certain things like the player's own character because you don't want the player to be able to you know obviously shoot themselves unless unless your game has that but majority of games don't have that and you also want to exclude uh parts of the gun because say if you're trying to shoot a player and your mouse is like it your your mouse is over a part of the gun 
and stuff so like the ray would hit the gun part before it hits the player so you kind of want to exclude it if that, if that makes sense so you want to do ray cast params dot filter descendants filter descendants instances so you can even make a table right and then pretty much you don't want to put like names of parts nor do you want to reference the part you want to get the descendants which pretty much means you want to let me show you what i mean so you want to do tool this is not out of by the way get descendants right and then this will return a table of whatever instances descendants it has right so it'll exclude these and then you also of course want to get the players you want to get the players characters descendants so get this will autofill for you though right and then that's how you got to do a raycast params now we are officially ready to make the raycast so local raycast is equal to workspace you can do game that workspace or workspace either one works workspace raycast then the origin of course would be the start position then you know of course the direction put in the raycast params make sure you chose the variable it should not be blue if it's blue then you uh you chose the built-in function to create params not the variable right and then what you want to do is you want to do if raycast then if raycast dot instance dot parent find first child humanoid then pretty much that pretty much searches whatever whatever the ray hits it searches the parent because obviously your ray should be hitting a player's parts like you know like their leg their arm and then if it finds a humanoid then it'll proceed to damage it and stuff so you can then do this raycast dot instance dot parent that humanoid dot health is less than or equal to and then here's where you would set the damage value here's where you would put how much damage it does stuff so if you wanted to do 10 damage you put 10 if you wanted to do 20 then, then you would do 20. see if you had like a type of gun where it was like i don't know like maybe like a healing type of gun because i have seen uh guns like that where like where like you shoot the player and he gives the player health then you would simply just change the minus sign to a plus sign and that's and that's what, what you just do from there so we can go ahead and just test this so far right by testing it we're going to test simply just to see if it does damage then we'll get into bullet travel after so we're going to need a test dummy so you could go to the uh toolbox and then insert a model or you could just go to the rig builder and then you know blood avatar and this is my avatar so yeah i'll test using this we can go ahead and hit play and then all i'm trying to test to see is if it does damage and if the range is you know good all right so all right so i take my gun out boom as you guys can see it is doing 10 right so if y'all if y'all is doing damage and stuff then you did it right now if you're if yours isn't doing damage and stuff make sure like your range like you're within the range you set right you get what i'm saying like if you if you set your range to like 20 or 10 like something very small then you'd have to you know obviously get close to the obviously get close to you know the uh, player and stuff but yeah here's what i mean though right if i were to shoot myself right now you like well you guys can't hear but i'm left clicking on myself and i'm not taking any damage and stuff that's because we're on the filter descendants instances which pretty much it it'll exclude it from the ray so you can't damage yourself right now getting into bullet travel now you want to press enter about mm, not three times you know, like just twice right now we're going to get into the actual tweening right so you want to do local duration let's make a variable local duration right we need to determine how long it will take for the tween to play because as you guys know or if you don't know um for tweens you set the amount of time like it, it should take for the animation to play and stuff now obviously with guns that's a tricky question and you need to set up some type of way to determine the duration because you obviously can't say one second or two seconds because you because you really don't know how far a player is from the object they're trying to hit a player could be a player could be like you know like five inches away and then a bullet's traveling at like a second you don't even see it or like you could be really far and then the bullet is traveling like really slowly if that makes sense so yeah so you get the duration by doing kind of the same kind of the same thing as uh what we did to get the direction right you want to do but it's a little different so you can do end position minus start position but instead of doing dot unit you want to do dot magnitude and divide this by a thousand now this is another very 
<clears throat> sorry this is another number that you guys can uh play with and stuff play around with kind of like how the range is and stuff so like if your bullet is traveling too slow or too fast if it's traveling too fast increase the number and then if it's going too slow decrease the number i believe that's how that should work but yeah just play around with the number until you get your desired result and stuff but yeah let's get into the 20 now so local bullet tween is equal to ts create then we need the instance so we go right here local we're going to clone the bullet local bullet clone is equal to bullet clone we're going to parent it to the workspace so bullet clone dot parent is equal to game dot workspace then bullet clone dot position we want it to obviously you know start off at the start position of where the bullet is you know exiting the gun and then of course we want to change the c frame we're pretty much trying to change the c frame so that like it's it should be facing the direction that the gun is facing so it, so the bullet isn't like sideways or anything and stuff i haven't perfected this but this should i believe it should work if it doesn't work if it doesn't work then um then if it doesn't work then i'll try to figure out another way so just let me know in the comments but yeah so bullet clone dot c frame is equal to c frame dot new then you want to do start position then you want to do start position plus tool dot middle there's an auto by the way dot middle dot c frame dot look vector and it's that simple now we can we're ready to start twinning so tween it by doing bullet clone then tween info dot new then you would put duration here instead of an actual number you'd put duration right let it calculate it itself then you want to do sorry space enum get your easing style now i would recommend uh doing cubic or quad these these i've heard and i've tested myself these are the best for making bullet travel and stuff so i would just play around with, with either one and see which one you prefer i prefer quid though me personally but you have to choose what you want and obviously for the um easing direction i'm just going to go without you know the bullets traveling out and then you need the property table the property you're changing this is simply position is equal to end position that simple and then you're going to press enter go to the next line then do bullet tween play and that's simple i believe everything should be good if it's not we'll simply come back to the script but yeah let's go ahead and test it now we already tested so we know that the gun does damage and within a certain range now all there is to test is if the bullet's traveling oh yeah there we go as you guys can see now obviously since it's calculated depending on how far you are it'll look a little different right so as you guys can see like the bullet it's like yeah you guys can see it traveling but you see it's very fast though so that's why you, that's why i said to play around with the number but obviously the further i go yeah you see the further i go you guys see it like kind of like it looks like it's kind of like appearing out of like the middle yeah like kind of in the middle right here so the further you go pretty much the further away you are the better you'll get a chance to see the bullet exiting the uh the gun depending on whatever you set this this value to but yeah that's how you make a gun script or just generally how you, that's how you set together a basic gun system and stuff hope this video was helpful i will definitely make a part two on like if you guys want me to include things like current attributes like ammo cooldowns uh ui like you know ui to show like how much bullets you have reload and stuff. i'll do stuff like that y'all just let me know in the comments and stuff if this video was helpful leave a like and subscribe links to join my roblox group and discord as well as become a channel member can be found in the description if you want uh, access to these scripts in this model uh you can become a channel member uh you can look in the description for how to become a channel member and yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video appreciate y'all for watching